Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us to Jazzum Sessions Live. You know, with special guest Brandon White. So basically what we're gonna do, you know, we're gonna talk, you know, you know, to get a little bit know, you know, get to know you a little bit better, you know, for those who don't know who you are. I mean, if, if they don't know who you are, then that's that's an issue because anyone should know who you are, you know. But uh, <laughs> but nice. um, so that's what we're gonna do, and then I'll read some of your pieces, and we can talk about the inspiration behind them and stuff like that, you know, and just have fun with it. Basically, that's what that's what the whole thing's gonna be about. Sounds good. So um, yeah. So I'm just trying to log in here on my laptop, and then that way I could have um, access to everything I need. Sure, man. And then we can just um, get started. But in the meantime, uh, I guess just start with, you know, for those who don't know who you are, you'll tell us a little bit more about yourself so we could, you know, just get acquainted, I guess, for those who don't know. Uh, my name is Brandon White, and I am a poet and songwriter from Fort Smith, Arkansas. Um, I'm a father of twins. I'm a husband. Uh, I have a book coming out this coming Friday, which is kind of insane um yeah that's big cowboys fan <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man what okay no so um that's awesome so okay so since you mentioned the book um i know you're also part of a compilation book right yeah yeah the uh, the poet symphony that was also through uh, raw earth inc and okay. it was uh it was a really cool collection, you know, it, the the central theme being music and how music affects people. And I couldn't help but want to be a part of that when when Tara extended that that offer. So uh, I had a couple of pieces already put together and I wrote another one uh, for the occasion and I submitted a, a digital painting for it as well. And so uh, that is that is in there as well. Wow, that's all. And I was gonna say, music is definitely a, a, a thing because um, there's so many emotions that comes into music, right? Like we, Thank you, we you know, like we write about it, you know, we talk about it, but like, like when we, because I know when I listen to music, man, I'm like in a whole other world, man. You know, yeah. like I listen to Foo yeah. Fighters or I listen to Puddle Butt or whatever it is, and like the lyrics is like, damn. Even though I never met these people, but it's like they understand what I go through or what you go through, what a lot of us sure. go through, you know. And that's yeah. cool that there's a um, th there's like a book now that, with different pieces that talks about that. That's awesome, you know, definitely. Now, um, your book, um, the year that stole the light away. Where did that title come from? Uh, like like so many other titles that that come to me, they they just sort of appear. Uh, you know, it it was trying to come up with a title to really encompass you know, the, the pieces that I compiled to, to make this first collection. Uh, and just thinking about uh, losing my dad and what my, uh, my mom and I went through. Uh, when, when it came to me, I just, I just kind of knew it was right. You know, it, it wasn't, there wasn't a certain moment that sparked it. It was just kind of there one day. And I said, okay, well, that, that's a gift. So I'm going to accept that. Wow, that's powerful. And I get you, man. Like, um, especially when you say about your dad, because, um, okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, no, so especially with your, especially with your dad, um, you know, because I lost my dad two years ago. He had pancreatic cancer. And because um, my mom went through some things, too. Um, like, my like my family went through a lot of crap, you know. Um, I'll say this. Uh, for me, personally, I saw a lot of true colors at that funeral. Like, I was just like, a lot, it, it just came to me one of those things like, oh my God, everything my father said about my family, why he was so distant towards them, it all came to light kind of thing. And I was like, oh, damn. But even after that, the healing process was very difficult because um, I know, for, again, like for me personally, I remember when uh, when my dad passed away, the first couple, and I, I just got married. Mm -hmm. So it's just the whole getting through that pain where, okay, but I, I can't hold on to this too long because now eventually I have a baby on the way. I have to worry about my wife and stuff like that. And then right. I told her, hey, you know, um, you have to stay at home, bed rest, so you can't work anymore. And she hasn't worked since. And then I had to take everything just fall on me, you know, but. Um, yeah, I, you know, it, it was, 
our, our stories aren't aren't exact, but uh, my dad was diagnosed for the first time. My my dad had three bouts with cancer, and the, the last one, you know, being being the final one. But uh, Kinsey and I had just gotten married, uh, St. Patrick's Day of 2012, and wow. uh, we knew uh, that my mom had found a, a bump on my dad's neck. And we left for our honeymoon. We came back, and I had a gig. Uh, two days after we got back, and he showed up. And I was uh, I was taking a break, and I went to the table that he was sitting at, and I asked him if he'd gotten any news, and he told me, "Well, uh, yeah, but we'll talk about it when you get done." Um, but I, I can't. I pushed, you know, and I found out that night, and so. It, yeah, the, the whole getting married and then finding out thing kind of kind of lines up. So, wow, that's down, bro. Like that that was, and it's it's interesting because um I know like with my father like my relationship with him was weird because mm. our relationship was like it was always like a language barrier because I spoke English and he spoke Spanish so it's like in my Spanish was very horrible, but the like. Out of all the times I've had in my whole life, um, I think like the last five years I had with him is after I came to the Lord and everything. Those are the ones I cherish and remember the most. That's when I started bonding True. with him a lot more. And I guess because I started to grow as a person. And when he passed away, it hurt a lot more because I felt like there were so many things I could have said or I should have yeah. said to him or certain things I wanted to talk to him about. And it's like, He's gone, you know, and then my mother, you know, um, she hasn't been the same since my dad passed away, you know, because she uh, doesn't eat as much anymore. Sometimes she's a little bit irresponsible with her medication. So it's just, um, you know, again, it's just constantly worrying. And then with this whole thing, with this coronavirus, it's just even oh, more. Yeah. So, I mean, but in your case, now that, you know, we're talking about this, um, like, how are you guys holding up as far as, like, like how's your mom, how's, like, as far as, you know, since your dad passed away, and, and not, so she's by herself at home, or she has a support system, like, how does that, like, work with you guys? Um, my, my mom and I are very similar in the, in the sense that we, uh, we, we kind of prefer our isolation. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, we, we like people, but we also tend to keep a, keep our distance. So, uh, you know, dad left mom in a, in a good enough place to where she can travel a, a bit. Uh, yeah. so she, she actually took her first trip to South Carolina, uh, in February and, or no, it was, I guess it was March, February, March. I can't remember. It's all running together for me now, <laughs> but, uh, that was right when all of this stuff really started to happen and everything started to lock down. And so she got stuck out there for, for eight weeks, but she has, uh, you know, she has some really beautiful friends, um, that have opened up their homes to her. So I think her plan as of right now is to, uh, actually sell the house and kind of, uh, just kind of live like a gypsy for a little bit. Oh, she's, uh, wow. she's talking about just kind of bouncing around, man, and just living and finding herself again. And I'm, I'm encouraging that because, uh, you know, she, what she went through to take care of dad, my, my dad's end of life care, uh, team was my mother, myself and my mother-in-law. Okay. Uh, and that was, that was a difficult experience, but I'm, you know, I'm thankful that I chose to do it. Uh, but you know that kind of consumed her life for the last three or four years and so wow. uh, if anyone deserves to get away and just kind of rediscover themselves it's her no i definitely agree with that and um, i felt the same way about my mother too because um even after my dad passed away somebody told me something very interesting i was talking about it with a friend of mine and he said the greatest thing about that i guess is the fact that um he's how do you say he said now that your dad's gone not that it's a bad thing or a good thing or whatever it's the fact is you're gonna see. You're gonna learn things about your mom that you never knew before. You know, yeah. because when yeah. my when his, when my dad and my mother are like, oh, it's mine. This is all for me. You know, and now that mm -hmm. he's gone, it's like you'll learn things about her that that you probably didn't even know even existed, but it was probably there the whole time. And that's what happened when my yeah. mom, like my mom was by herself, she started getting accustomed to just being single. Now, and, you know, I learned so much more about my mother than I've ever learned in my entire life. Yeah, I mean, my. Uh my mom has always kind of been, you know, set in her ways. <laughs> She's always been pretty, uh, freewheeling, uh, pretty liberal. Um, she, you know, she loves 
loves rock and roll. She loves Motown. She loves uh, listening to the oldies and smoking a joint and dancing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, uh, she'd probably kill me for saying that on this, but. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, but it's all good, bro. Uh, yeah, hey, I was sometimes gonna say, I, I, all you think sometimes. <laughs> well, it, it, it's uniquely her, you know, and I'm, I couldn't have had a better, a better mother and, or father. I'm, I'm extremely blessed, you know. Amen. Amen. Man. And that's what it is too. At the end of the day, man, making the best of what you have. And just at the end of the day, it's like, all right, like this is this, but I'm going to make the best of what I have here right now, you know? And that's a, that's a sure. beautiful thing, but uh, I feel you on that. Let me just, uh, give me a second. I'm having issues here. Oh, here it is. That's oh, you're good, man. Okay. All right. All right. So now what we're going to do, uh, we are going, just give me one second. Okay, here we go. Because on the computer, it looks different than it is on the mobile phone. So, you know how you have them in folders and stuff like that when you save a, a, a post? They don't do it like that on the computer, so it's different. And my other phone is, like, messed up at the moment, so I was like, oh, crap. All right, so I'm going to read a piece, you know, that, that you wrote because it's all about you. And then we're going to talk about it, see how that, you know, the, you know you'll see. You'll see. So we're going to read this first piece, and then we'll talk about it. Interesting. Why? Oh, this is not good. Wait, give me one second. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. For some, okay. All right, so for some reason, I'm trying to, uh, see the piece but it's not letting me damn this is oh, i'm really sorry man this is not a good look i don't like no, no. this is not there's there's again, no like, pressure I, had, man. I had such a oh my god i had such a weird day and now uh, this is just oh this is not All good, good. i promise you i'm i'm not i'm in no hurry i've got nowhere to be no i know but still you know it's just like i, I had this whole preparation and everything and yet like this is just acting up on me this is not good but um but that's all right i guess well uh, all right well for some reason i can't because i want to read the piece but it's not letting me for some reason um but the piece i wanted to read was called um depression is a stop fault. that was the piece i was going to read but i can't see the actual piece for some reason but i guess um i guess just tell me about that like how did that come about you say the title for me one more time. It's called um, "Depression." It's a South Pole. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can pull that one up real quick. Actually, I know that. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. This is no, not no, 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 no. <laughs> There, are, you have no reason to apologize. I appreciate. I appreciate you doing this. Let's see. Yeah, right here. Depression's a South Pole. Striking from strange angles and landing shots with ease. For some of us, this is our great battle. The only true war we'll ever know. Fought not for country or political gain. Fought not to affirm one's masculinity or prove one's fortitude. Our prize is our lives. Seeing another day. And that's enough. Uh, you know, that really... Anytime I'm writing that way, I'm usually kind of in the in the throes of a <laughs> of a bad you know bad mood swing or uh, or you know kind of in my dark place. Um, that one I remember writing uh, on my lunch break. I was sitting out in my car uh, where I do a lot of my writing actually, and. Uh, just trying to write something to, to encompass that feeling. You know, it, it, it's a relatable enough subject, uh, possibly done to death, but uh, I think that's part of the, the beauty and the challenge of being a writer is you're, at the end of the day, we only have so many subjects we can really touch on. Uh, we've got to find a way to communicate those feelings in a new way. And uh, that was my, my attempt. So thank you, Annabelle. Wow. No, I feel you with that. And I was going to say, so um, walk me through that, like the writing process. Now, you said 
this is um you said in your car right that's what you said like yeah, yeah. yeah. no like what like when once you lock that door in your car what actually happens once you're in there like how does this work once like once you're there what happens that you know that's a great question and it's a it's a really um shitty answer <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, <so> well <laughs> I, I was gonna say it's like um you know we i think we all try to explain that the best we can with because that, that that's a pretty common question when people find out that you write they want to know okay well uh, as a songwriter, for example, the the age old question is, um, well, what comes first, the music or the lyrics? And it's it's not really that, you know what I mean? There's there's a, a sort of alchemy that takes place. I think when you when you enter into that kind of flow of creativity, um, I'm not trying to sound too pretentious when I say that because it is a very different mindset. And I think most of the folks here are writers, and they can probably attest to that. It's uh, it does require you to kind of operate as a, as the fisherman, you know, spending enough time on the lake to catch the big ones. But there's also a degree of, um, of mystery. And I think that when we try to break the mystery down too much, uh, it kind of loses its power. You know, I've, I've always liked the idea of uh, the muse being kind of a skittish bird. And it's one of those things where, uh, it will it will land on your windowsill and it will come and visit you. Um, but the more that you, or the closer you try to get, uh, she she flies away. And so um, I try to just take a seat and I try to just be quiet and let it let it come. You know, uh, I don't I don't have any any process necessarily other than sitting in the car, uh, putting on some. Uh, you know, nice piano music or something. Uh, Brett actually plays a lot of the the same tunes that I listen to during his lives on Saturdays. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. I love uh, that. Well, it, the, the first time I ever saw one of his lives, I, I was listening to it. I was like, "Son of a bitch, that is the same stuff I listen to all of the time." Um, but yeah, you know, I just kind of try to let myself be still, you know. And I think that that's where you find it. It's it's the hustle and bustle of the day that takes us away from that mind, yeah, you know, that mind space. So. I just try to uh, make myself available to it. Nah, I hear you. And, and you said something very interesting still about being still. Um, I know in my life, I feel like being still is difficult sometimes, but you have sure. so much going on in here. And I feel like sure. this right here is so powerful, but it's also dangerous, you know, because I feel like sometimes really? it takes you to places that I probably didn't even know it was even there in the first place, you know, mm -hmm. and Sometimes I feel like if you just be still and just see what happens, I think that's what makes the writing more magical. You know, it makes it more like so profound because the um, just the just the just the like you write it and then once you look back and then, wow, you know, like I wrote this. Oh, oh my god, this is crazy, right? And then I feel like you know, just looking back at those writings, you're like, wow, you know, even though you're not there now, but that's where you were when you wrote that piece. You know, yeah, absolutely, yeah, no, I poetry you know me i've only been writing uh poetry really since a, a, around october of 2018 okay um, and it it kind of presented this really wonderful outlet for me because i you know in, in songwriting especially when you're you're in a position where you don't have money to hire a producer and an engineer to go into a studio and be working with people all the time uh because you're just trying to get by yourself um things kind of move very slowly. And so you'll be working on tunes, you'll be recording and you'll do it again and again and again and again, trying to get it right until eventually you want nothing to do with the song. The last thing you want to do is go out and sing it. Um, and for me, like my mind works uh, kind of, I feel like it's an overdrive all the time. And uh, so poetry kind of presented this, this unique vehicle where I could get an idea out and I could be done with it and I can move on to the next one. And so from, from October 18 to October 19, I think I wrote 330 poems or more And that. I don't know if that's a, you know, that seemed like a lot to me, but I, I think I see other people on here that probably smoke that number. So, um, yeah. Uh, back, back to what you were saying about, you know, the mystery of it all, the, uh, where does it come from? It, I think it's a great question. I, I've, I've heard a lot of people, think that it's uh it's got nothing to do with them at all you know it's more you're more of an antenna for something trying to come through from right. wherever you know 
Right, right. Wow, that's yeah, that's very powerful. It's all like that. I'm like flabbergasted right now, bro. Because like I've always said this to people too. Like you know, like or even even you know, when I'm talking to my wife or just talking in conversation in live or whatever. Like you're that kind of guy. Like you speak. Like we have to listen. Like you can't miss nothing. You know. Like it's such a wow, man. That you really very nice of you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Wow, man, for real. Like that's um. Again, very, very profound. You just, you just give me one second, okay? Yeah, yeah, um, go ahead. Can you get um, my wife on this new topic, huh? No, so my wife's going to get me my other phone um, because I try to download the app here because I have the Chromebook, but yeah. it's just like I have the, huh? Um, I have the Chromebook, but the thing is, like, I have the app and everything, but it's just not... Um, uh, like, 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 I have it right here, but it's not letting me see. It's not letting me. See. I'll tell you, man. I think somebody said in the comments, like, technology hates us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep oh, up with, like, with these comments a little bit. I'm, I'm not very good at this live thing yet. <laughs> I've got. I need to practice. This is the first time I've ever done this uh, alive in any way. I, I attend a lot of them, but right, right, right. Yeah, Anthony's here. Tara's here. Brett's here. Irene. A lot of cool people here, man. That's awesome. Definitely, definitely. A lot of talented all right, people. so, all right, I'm gonna just stick to the fall. I try to use this, but it's it's just not it's just not my friend today. <laughs> this is not my friend today. It's all um, good. Man. Man. Cause I have, I also have um, what is that? Like I have, I had Windows, but I don't really like Windows like that. So I was using Linux and the Chromebook, and typically this never messes up. For some reason today, it just did not. It just does not want to work. <laughs> I got oh, so I was like, oh, really? The one day I need you to be good, you mess me up. Thanks. But, all right, it's all good. I got the phone here. It's working good. Thank God. So now I could just go to my actual original thing where now nothing. There you go. You try to you try to play me, but not today. No, nah, but that's no, nah, definitely, man. All right, so give me one second. With this a low, and then I'm gonna now I can read the next piece. There we go. You're good. I'm pouring another beer to make sure that I am ready for all questions. All right. Oh, so um. Oh, okay. Speaking of, because Brett says something can't perform under pressure. So you talked about the poetry. <laughs> you talked about the music. Yeah. Um. So what do you prefer best for you? Do you still prefer the music, or do you just prefer the poetry because it's just the easier scope of things? Um. You know, that, that's a good question. Um, I I did music for so long, um, or I've done music for so long. I don't want to speak about it in the past tense. Uh, but from the time I was 14 or 15, I, I had a guitar before even then. Um, I got my first guitar when I was in the fourth grade. And I tried to take, I, I took two lessons and realized that I wasn't going to be Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> and so I, I, put it down for a little bit and then I came back to it and when I came back to it I was better <laughs> I was better at the instrument which was kind of weird oh, wow. uh, and then from the time uh, that I was 14 until 30 I guess um, pretty much non-stop gigging recording uh, going to Nashville working with different producers that have done a, a lot of really cool things um, and, you know, you go after it, and eventually, if you're lucky, and I, I consider myself lucky, I never, you know, never did anything huge with it, but uh, you get close enough to where you kind of realize that, wow, this isn't really what I thought it was. Um, wow, okay. You, you, well, you get, you get close to the business side, because, you know, if you're going to Nashville and you're recording, uh, and you're trying to rub shoulders with people, it, it's because you're trying to get somewhere with it. And the closer you get to it, you realize, oh, wow, you know, a lot of these country singers aren't really country singers. They're failed pop singers. And this was another route that they chose to go in order to make it. And you start to just see a lot of things that, that are really distasteful. And uh, I couldn't see myself doing. So uh, eventually it, it stopped being fun. Um, and I had to get away from it, you know. And, you know, my dad getting sick kind of caused some of that uh and then i had babies i had twins and i wasn't going to be out gigging late and leaving my wife to care for 
you know, newborn twins, I, I didn't want to miss first steps or first words or anything like that. And so I just kind of uh, backed away from it and uh, kind of stumbled into poetry. And now I've got a book coming out. So things work out, right? No, I hear you, brother. And it's, it's interesting because, like, I've heard so, you know, like, I know a lot about music as far as, like, the history and stuff like that. And, and you know, like, because I have friends that do music, but then, I, you know, like, I, I always had access to computers, so I'm just curious and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But you said something very interesting about how the the country the country singers are not country singers, they're failed pop singers. Like, I'm like, probably how, being it, a dick. <laughs> no, hey, you know what? Hey, it, this is a good place to be a dick. It's all good. All right, cool. <laughs> but it's interesting friendly. because it makes you wonder, like, damn, so it's not what it appears to be. So it's like, don't let the looks deceive you. Like, Have you crazy. ever watched professional wrestling? Oh, I love wrestling. Are you kidding okay, me? Cool. Like, so you know a lot about the uh, the backstage of professional wrestling. Right, you know, the backstage work, politics, right? and I, I know about why I see a left, image, and I know all that. Gimmick, all of those things, who's, who's the heel, who's the face. Yeah, who's, I know all, all that. that kind of Man, that's, that's in the music industry, you know? Um, wow. There are a lot of people that think that the Gallagher brothers feud with Oasis back in the 90s uh, and to today is still just a way for them to grab headlines. You know, there, there's a lot of... Uh, it, it's just not what you think it is. And, and you can find a lot of singers that, that think this way too. I mean, go, go listen to Van Morrison talk about the music industry. I mean, talk about somebody that hates it. <laughs> that yeah, guy really well, hates it. Uh, yeah. And he's, you know, profited enormously off of it, even though he's never made a dime off a of brown eyed girl, which I find interesting. But uh, yeah, I mean, I could I can go down that rabbit hole, and we could get lost there if you want. Hey, um, this, this it's all about you, bro. Whatever you want to talk about, this is what it's all about, you know. So, <laughs> hey, like I said, we'll be here till as long as whatever. I mean, I can't be yeah, there no, no, cool. later, no later than nine o'clock. But I can still hear. I can be here another hour. It's all good, brother. The day, bro, yeah, we're yeah. talking, just having fun, get to know you, talk about your book more, which we'll get into a little bit more later on. But just sure. at the end of the day, it's just you know, it's true, you know, like. And, and I think in a lot of industries, it really is like that, right? But then there's this whole thing, like the, the oh, how do I explain it? Like there's the, you do things to cover it up so it doesn't look a certain way. I, I'll give you an example yeah. when, because um, you talk about wrestling. So I, I feel like I should have been a wrestling historian. Let's put it that way, like Jim Cornette type of guy. Because I, I, oh, I, sure. I don't know if you've ever seen Dark Side of the Ring. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have. That, like, that's what I'm saying. So basically all that, it's similar, like, in music. I've heard stories, but I never knew. And then I guess now that you said it, coming from you and confirming that thing. So um, with um, CM Punk, for example, he left, right? He just had it, you know. Um, basically what it came down to is he was just tired. He was depressed. He was getting hurt. They weren't giving him time off. So when he went on Cole Cabana's podcast and blasted basically WWE and then this man comes out like you know try to try to cover some things up because he got fired on his wedding day that's what happened and he's like oh no that was just a coincidence you know like the damage control but it just comes to show like without him realizing he's just exposed himself he's like oh no well that was just a coincidence no it's like you know there's just something it's just crazy you know like so many things gets exposed well, I, like I that think, you know when money gets introduced into anything yeah. It's it's not going to, you know, the the purity is going to be lost pretty quickly. And and you can, uh, you know, kind of going back to music. If you if you look at those early rock and roll records, uh, and what those meant to people and how organic a lot of them were, there there was eventually a shift where it stopped being these uh, cigar chomping record execs that said, I don't know what it is, but it's selling, so let them do it. So you had guys like Frank Zappa and all that that were allowed to make records. And eventually you got these A&R guys that were kids who thought they knew what was cool. <laughs> and so uh, that kind of uh, sank the boat, really, because those A&R guys want to tell you what should be in a song or how you should look or this, you know, whatever. And it's- Like I know Queen. Yeah. I know Queen went through something like that. Like, I mean, even Most before I saw the movie, like, yeah. I know there were documentaries about it. 
And it just, Freddie Mercury just refused to change. Like, I was like, no, this is what it is in that city. Like, Bohemian Rap City was one song that they did not see being a hit. They wanted, yeah. I forgot what song it was they wanted. I think it was like one of the B-sides of their, like, that single or something like that. And it just, he just was not having it. And Freddie Mercury, no, we're not changing. This is what we are, and that's it. Like, and that's how it is, reality. Um, I think also with um, Demi Lovato, same thing. When she first started, she wasn't always with the, the music she does today. She was doing, they, they, I guess who she was signed to, they wanted her to do this weird pop music. It just, she did some albums like that, but it just wasn't her. And then she, I think she ended up going somewhere else and she was allowed to have that creativity that she had. I think Alicia Keys too went through the same thing where like, yeah. The first record deal she had, they were not allowing her to do her music, and then she had to find somewhere else to do it. But had it not been for that push, her music wouldn't be how it is today. You know? Brett, Brett mentions a really, a really good song there, uh, "Have a Cigar" by Pete. Oh, I love "Have a Cigar." Foo Fighters yeah. has like two different covers of that song. Which, which one's <laughs> pink? Yeah, that. I mean, there's find me a better song that describes it. You know what I mean? Um, I actually had a, I had an offer. Uh, with a small label from Universal UK, and uh, I chose not to take it because it was right after I got married, and uh, I didn't want to go to Europe for six months essentially without my wife. Um, and you know the the record deals, and I'm you know I don't want to keep harping on this, and this be the only thing that I talk about because I'll I'll ramble on. Um, <laughs> but the the record deals now, a lot of them are what they call three hundred and sixty deals. Okay. And so what that means is the, the record label doesn't just get a cut of, uh, of what your record does. And, you know, by and large, they get the, the lion's share of what your record sells. But because records don't really sell anymore and things have gone streaming and so forth, uh, they then will get a chunk of your merchandise. They'll get a chunk of any revenue stream you have. And so that's, uh, you know, Tom Petty has a great song about it, too. Um, I'll have to look up the title for you. It's off of his, uh, hold one second, I'll find it. But it, you know, Tom it's Petty, uh, the, uh, yeah. Legend, man, legend business, man. Absolutely. Don't I, I caught him on his last tour, it was so good. Uh, but, but the line that caught me was, uh, you get to be famous, I get to be rich. And wow. that's very, okay. that's very much what it is. Um, it's just, it's a crooked industry, you know, and there, are, you know, there's still a lot of beautiful music out there and people that are really, uh, wonderful artists that need to be heard. I just wish that, you know, the game is a little bit different, but, you know, so does everybody else. And I'm. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, I, I, this friend of mine, her name is Nicola. She does music and she has something similar happen to her like that. And she just saw how ugly it was. So she just goes to the Staten Island Ferry on the terminal and just starts singing. She'll go to bars and sing. And she's more happy doing that than just being the whole, like you said, the whole industry thing. And I think in a lot of industries, it's like that, but like that, what you're saying, that's very, very heavy stuff, man. And it's just, and it sucks that like something you love so much, you can't fully enjoy it because there's always the the money, the politics, it, it sucks, you know? And I agree with you when you said about the music because um, I've heard artists better, I, I'm not hating on the music of, you know, the industry. Like I like music too, but it's just like, I've heard a lot more cooler and deeper, more profound music like in train stations than I've heard like on the radio these days. Well, yeah, because I mean, those those are people that are playing out of survival. Those, those are your those are artists that are doing work there in front of yes. you. And there's uh, there, there's a very big difference between somebody that is playing an instrument in the moment that's not overdubbing it, not going back and fixing every right. other tune string or, you know, obviously you want to play in tune, <laughs> right? I mean, that's a good thing for a record, but. Right. Uh, you know, the, the idea that a band needs to be on a metronome, that the, you don't need the ebb and flow that you find on a Miles Davis record because those guys weren't playing to that. And you can feel the band speed up. You can feel the band yes. slow down. You can feel all of those things. Those are beautiful things. That's the human element of music. You remove yeah. that, and all of a sudden, you're listening to what? Your, your perceived perfection, which is not even close. You, you've robbed the, the song of its, of its authority, you know? No, and I... Oh my God, that's so true because I saw a documentary. Um, they, and this is what I say, like when it, and I said earlier that my, one of my favorite bands is Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl, sure, yeah. just him alone. 
that man, like, it's so yeah. funny because that's exactly what I thought about when you're saying this because he did a movie, uh, a document called Sound City. Mm. And and even though it's about the studio and it, you know, it, it left and everything, but one thing he said very powerful was like, it's not about digital versus analog, it's all about how do you maintain human element in, in music? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, my, my one of my favorite writers, uh, he's a songwriter, but he, he's a poet as well. He actually just recently had a poem, uh, published in the New Yorker and he's a very successful uh, music producer uh, and a relatively successful songwriter. He's got like a small cult following, but his name's Joe Henry. And okay. you, every now and then you'll see me post something on my story about him because I'm just so uh, into what he does. He is really like jaw droppingly good as a writer. Um, but you know, when he gets a, a group of guys together in a studio, it, it takes him a week to make a record. It takes some of these, bands a year you know but he just gets a group of musicians that he knows are great players he knows they can follow each other he knows they have great chemistry they hit record they do a pass and they listen to it and maybe that's the record <laughs> you know, oh I, my I, God. yeah i'm in love with that so like my last couple of songs that i put out uh the mountains peak in houston uh both of those were you know i just put a microphone in front of my face and a microphone in front of my guitar hit record and i played the song and to me that every now and then you'll have a note that's not perfect but right through it like that but that's the, but that's the way it play. should be like yeah. i definitely agree with that um i but know it's that um, idea man that, that kind of permeates our our society right now which is everything needs to be a highlight reel and so even even your art even your music what does that what does that mean like that's a terrifying right. idea to me um you you need all of it. You need the good, the bad, the ugly. We need to be talking about everything when we're when we're creating. And if we're not doing that, we're kind of neutering ourselves, and we're we're making this. We're we're allowing it to be co opted, so it's so it's cool. You right. know that, how dangerous is that? Right. Like, it is. It is. Like yeah. I'm all about the legacy. I'm all about the impact you leave behind. So it's like when um like like I see guys like let's say Michael Jackson or something, right? Because sure. you know he wasn't a rock guy, but you know he was like his lyrics was so real. Yeah. And these people artist. try to stop him, and he just said, "No, I'm not doing that. Are you kidding me? This is what I feel. This is what I'm writing. That's it. I don't care if you like it." Like that's what's that song? Um, they don't they don't care about us. Like you know how much controversial stuff that song had, and he oh, didn't. Yeah, he still this. You know, oh, and that's yeah. what it's all about. It's about the realness. But I feel like in today's society, the realness is fading away. It sucks, you know. And yeah. I get. I, you, you make I'm enough white story. people uncomfortable, then you're going to hear a lot about it on the news. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like I talk about this with my wife all the time. Like, all, and I'm like, that. It sucks how music today is just. Oh my God, man! It's like the human element is fading away, and it sucks, you know. And yeah, like, it is. And it, like, well, what happened you know, to all that, you know? Like well, Bob Marley, well, another perfect example, man. Like he was so real. Like you don't have those anymore. Well, you, you have some. You just have to look for them. You got to dig. Yeah. And, and so, but as far as mainstream music thoughts, yeah, like you know, I mean, but that let let Clear Channel have the radio. I would right. rather have. I would rather discover these guys on my own and still have that excited feeling of, uh, oh, this is mine, instead of something that I'm spoon fed. And so no, I, I hear you. I yeah, hear you. So, you know, let, let them have their cool. Uh, it lasts for a second and then it's gone and on to the yeah. next. And there's still great records to be heard. So, yes, yes. That's how I feel about uh, Savage Garden. Like, even after they broke up and did whatever, but Darren Hayes, even though he was never a big, you know, like, very big popular guy after that. But, like, if you listen to his music, it's so organic. And I, I always tell myself, I always tell people who know about that, he's a very underrated guy. Like, this guy, the, the underrated vocalist. is ridiculous. It, yeah. yeah, he's a, I, you know, my, my wife loves Savage Garden, and I I know their hits, but uh, his range is unreal. Like, he's, he's a very powerful singer. Yes. Oh man! All right, <laughs> this is fun, you know. I was talking about music, and I, I, that's like my category. Like I love talking about music and just the history oh, of too. things in the back. I love that, you know. So it, it like, just it stinks because every time I talk about it, people listen to me and they're like, "Oh wow, you just <laughs> love music," you know. But I mean, it's just I'm I'm just saying what I think, man. So man, no, it's the way it should be, man. No filter here, man. 
Charles is gonna throw Try not to. <laughs> Oh man! And so you go, I'm, I'm looking at my screen. My like, oh, I look like some sadistic with the stupid light because my light. Oh my god! It's great, man. It's great. Don't even worry. All right. So I'm gonna. All right. So this next piece um, is an excerpt, in actually, and this title is very interesting. So it says, sure. "A turkey sandwich and a herd of wild chicken." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's do it. So. I have the book. I can actually see the piece, so I can actually read it. Thank goodness. So, all right. The leaves will change soon. I used to think of falling leaves as a kind of slow death. It's nothing more than trees protecting themselves, shedding the unnecessary to survive. I love, first of all, I love the metaphor behind this because if you look, I, I could, you could take this in so many directions that's with this piece. But, so, wait, before I you go ahead, tell me about this piece. And the title is very interesting. <laughs> which I've heard of wild chicken. Like, well, you know, awesome. there's, there's one of those card pieces again. I'm, I remember very much. Uh... Oh, no. What happened? Uh oh. Back, my back. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I was like, wait, I, like, yeah, is my, he spinning? I, I'm probably gonna have to switch to my uh to my phone here in a bit because my my battery's dying on my iPad. But um, oh, okay. so I'm I'm sitting in my car. I'm eating lunch. I'm blank. I have nothing to offer anyone. <laughs> and uh, it, it's in times like those that I've really tried to train my mind to be aware of what's going on around me and to try to take that and like, how can I take something that's pretty mundane and try to flip that to something, you know, you know, interesting <laughs> because if, if I'm quiet enough and I'm, and I'm aware enough of what's going on around me, I'm constantly surrounded by creativity. Uh, everything that exists. Did I freeze up, bud? No, no, you're good. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm eating, and then um, like 30 kids are walking towards my car, and they stop one foot in front of my car, and they um, basically are, are sitting there learning about street art. One kid's like got his, he's knuckle deep in his nose and his, you know, I just kind of t took that image and ran with it, really. I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to back out real quick and try to join on my phone before this thing dies. Okay. So I'll be right back with you. Cool, cool, cool. Right, Thanks, man. We'll be here. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right. All right, guys. If you stay tuned, um, he's in a back. Yeah, his phone's acting up. But, um... Very, very interesting life so far. This is awesome, and I am honored and privileged to have him. This is the first time going live for the first time, and he has been, oh, my God, this is exactly better than what I imagined. Like, oh, my God, let me see the comments. Oh, man. Okay. All right, there he goes. And we're back. All right. <laughs> oh, I tell you, man, technology hates us today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I actually, I had that thing plugged in, and apparently, I plugged it in wrong. So it's, it was sitting there, and I thought it was charging all day, and it, it wasn't. So, um, this will work. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So we were talking about the the turkey sandwich and the turtle box chicken. <laughs> Yeah, I I, that. I, I did you hear everything that I said? Because I don't know if I was like dropping out my my iPad. No, um, out. I don't know about everybody else. I know on your end, the last thing you told me about was a bunch of kids um in your car. But then like I don't Walking know. That's like okay, okay. So I'll, I'll pick up there. So I'm I'm sitting there eating and 
I'm like just kind of zoning out, looking out the window. And when I look ahead of me again, there's 30 kids walking towards me and they're, they're doing this thing. We, in downtown Fort Smith, uh, every year for the last few years, they've done this thing called the Unexpected Project. And what they do is they invite these street artists from all over the world and they come and they pick a building and that building is the canvas. And they, yeah, it's really cool. Um, and they were t taking these kids around, they were explaining art um, as if that's something that's easy to do, but they were, they were teaching these kids the best they could, like, this is what this is. And this is why this is important. And, uh, I thought that was interesting. Um, and the, the kid picking, picking his nose was a real thing that's later in that piece. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and so it, it was just another example of what do I have to work with? You know, a, a, a painter only has so many colors on the palette. A poet only has so many subjects to write about or songwriter or whatever. Uh, and so when I'm not, you know, in my best Jane Hirschfield mode where I'm just creating some beautiful metaphors out of nothing, I've got to take what I can take and try to make something out of that. And uh, it ends up a lot of the times those end up being people's favorite pieces are the ones that are just, <laughs> kind of uh, rooted in reality, I guess. Right, 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 man. That's, oh, that's awesome, brother. That's so awesome. And again, it's like, what it goes down to is again, like the, like like what you have right there in front of you, it's like there's so many things you can grab from that and just write about it, you know? And, and I, sure. and the thing with this piece that I like is just, cause I used to think like that too, where like when leaves fall, it's like slow, like it's like some kind of that, like as if the leaf, uh, like the tree is dying per se. But no, it's just true. They are getting rid of the things that they don't need anymore. It's kind of like- um, They're cutting things away. We, we all do that. All of us yeah. constantly. Like you either hang on to something that is toxic in your life or you cut it away and you yeah. survive and you move on. And that's, you know, if, if everything around you uh, if you're aware of it, uh, is kind of a wonderful metaphor for life in, yeah. in some way or another, you know? And so just training the mind to be aware. And I'm, you know, I'm no freaking expert on any of this stuff. I'm just doing my best, you know, trying to get better at it. Right. Right. No, I, I hear you on that, man. And it's like, it, it, it is exactly just that, you know, it's just the whole letting go. And I think the hardest part of letting go is when you, it's the fact that when you're still holding on to that, I saw this picture one time where um, they had like a rope and there was like a person holding the rope. Like it was like split and it was another one with the rope, but the hand let go of the rope. And basically the more you hold on, the more your hand's going to hurt where it's going to get numb and then you can't hold on to this anymore and it's going to drop you. Yeah. Type thing. And it, it hurts. It's easy to let go and opposed to hold it on and that thing lets you go and then you fall and hurt yourself. I, I guess if, if that makes sense. Totally, yeah, absolutely. And it's and it's so, I tell you, man, like imagery is such a powerful thing. and Because like, I'll look at a picture, but I always try to see the bigger part of the picture. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, it's just, because like if I see a painting, okay, but, but what did the person go but what was behind that painting? What the person had to go through to paint that? You know what I'm saying? Like I know sure. this wasn't just yeah. one time. Well, and, and paintings are interesting when you when you really break it down. I mean, a lot of the time, materials are uh, every bit as important as as whatever the subject seems to be. You know right. what what era did this come from? What were they going through? Why did they choose these materials? These colors. Uh, yes. You know, art in its in and of itself is infinitely fascinating if, if executed well. So, I definitely you know, agree. I, I agree. And speaking of, because I know you do a lot of painting yourself too, actually. So I, I, I dabble, man. <laughs> um, like, uh, it was so art, man. You want to talk about so like the most terrifying thing that I've done on Instagram, other than this moment, um, is like actually posting something like that because I, you know just like anything else, there's no real criteria by which someone can judge uh, a, a painting or whatever. They, they can talk about perspective and all this boring shit, or we can just say like, that makes that, that evokes some emotion in me. And that's what I try to work off of. So I, I make something, I say, you know what, I feel pretty good about it. I'm going to hang it out there and wait for someone to tear my guts out. <laughs> yeah. like old right? So, um, oh, I'm glad that you've noticed them. That's nice. <laughs> 
Kafka yun na. So, um, okay. Yeah, Terry's talking about she says He says that he created his own book cover. So I, I had a hand in that. She helped me with the text, though. Thank you. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so this one is called um, Johnny in Flames. So it's not a, it's not an actual page. It's the paint the, 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 the artwork that you did, but I want to show it right here. Yeah, 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 I remember that one. Walk me through that quick, because we have like six minutes left, but what I'll do is I'll restart the live and we'll continue on and stuff. But okay, talk to sure. me about this piece. Uh, really, man, what, what I tend to do, um, when it, when messing with with painting or anything like that, you know, digital painting, uh, I'll typically just put music on, and I'll try to come up with a palette of colors that I that I find pleasing to the eye. And and with that, those those kind of swirl pieces that I was doing for a little bit, I may get back to doing at some point. I don't know. Um, I'm just kind of waiting for something to to reveal itself. So I'm kind of just sitting there listening to something and just kind of uh, letting my hand work without trying to think too much, I guess. Uh, and I, I've been extremely fortunate. A lot of times I, I find that I'm like, oh, wow, there, there seem to be images here. And so I, I would ask in, in the post, like, uh, please tell me what you see, because I, I'm way more fascinated in, in like you or anyone else getting on there and saying, hey, you know, that's. I see this, you know, uh, and, and providing meaning for me versus me saying, this is what you should see. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. No, I agree with you on that. I definitely agree with you on that. Somebody said, uh, okay, Tara said, you create until it feels right. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, man. All right, let's see. Yeah. All right, no, it's 54. Oh, I, I said that wrong. It's actually not. Or whatever, so it's 54, so it's going to be five minutes left, okay? I think okay. I said six minutes when it was 53, but I'm at eight, seven minutes. Oh, okay. Sure, yeah, yeah. So, um, because I had certain things in a certain order because I wanted to, um, you know, dive in. So, you know, since we have uh, five minutes left, so let's talk a little bit about the book, you know, because this is, you know, important as well. So, so I know you talked about the title, but like, again, like, how, so how did this just, like, did you just put something together and say, hey, I want to write a book? Like, what, like, what decided, okay, let's do it. Um, yeah, that, that's okay. <laughs> I, it was more, I was just writing a lot of poems. Um, and then when I, when I finally stopped and, and looked at what I was uh, sitting on, I had something like 400 at the time. And I just thought to myself, like, you know, I'm, I'm reading a lot of poetry. I still am uh, not just on Instagram, but I'm buying books and I'm studying and I'm trying to, you know, figure out what other people are doing. And uh, I thought to myself, well, you know, I, I really wonder if I've got uh, enough pieces here to to create a, co a cohesive collection, you know, and I don't know if I'm doing this stuff right or not. Like the, the way that I think in terms of putting a book together is very much the same as I thought when putting an album together, which was um, I need to, there needs to be an arc that, that the reader or the listener, you know, can follow. Uh, and if I'm not hitting that mark, then I'm just fucking throwing poems together and, saying, hey, here's a book. Let me come up with a clever title and stick it out there. And there's plenty of that out there. <laughs> like, I've read enough right. of these books now where I'm like, okay. Um, and that's not me trying to shit on anyone. It's just, it's the same in music. It's the same in every medium. There's some people that really want to just be that. And maybe I'm one of those people. I don't know. Right. But, right. Um, you know, I, I started kind of editing it down. And when, when I, you know, spoke with Tara about publishing and uh, things like that. She she helped me as well. So I, I put a manuscript together and I sent it to her and um, got her feedback on it. And that was so instrumental in me feeling good about moving forward. And, and another person that, that helped me so much with that was uh, Holly on the line. Yes. Um, awesome. I, yeah. Oh, she's a she's such an amazing talent. Uh, I sent it to her and said, please don't hold back. Like just <laughs> just tell me what you think. And, uh, you know, she, 
she told me uh, on a couple of occasions with, with, with a couple of the pieces like, Hey, this is, this makes me feel this way. And I don't think that's good. Um, and so the, I, you know, that when you can have those kinds of people uh, surround you and give you feedback and all that, I mean, that, that's a wonderful thing, man. Like you, that that's invaluable. Wow. No, and it's sure. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> no, no, that's it. No, you did. I'm just, you know, okay, I'm just cool. intrigued. Every time you talk, again, like I can't miss nothing when you talk. Like I'm just drawn to this whole thing. Like, why? <laughs> that's you know, nice. Like, Thank you. like I don't need school. You know, this is what it is right here. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so Tara's here. So this Tara, this is the one that that with the yes. book that published the book. Okay, I gotta get in contact with her. Yeah, she is amazing. She's a phenomenally talented writer. Uh, nice. Has has a great mind for all of this. Has taught me a lot and has been such a, a wonderful resource. And I'm I'm very thankful. That's amazing. And that's what I like about this community on Instagram, the fact that there's even something like this existing. And you know what's crazy? Because when I first came on Instagram, um, I, I might as well, I'll tell the story while we're still waiting for people and people are jumping in sure. now. So the way I started this whole jam them down thing, um, this started off as a joke, like the, the name, like just because I saw all these poets have these interesting names, like Bleeding Heart So and then all this other stuff or her words all right. I'm just Okay, cool. You know, whatever. And um, what's the other one? Joey Love Bright Paint. Like, there's all these names. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I need a catchy one. So instead of write it down and, and, and jot it down, so like, what about jam it down? Like, screw it. But it's so funny. And I, I've never said this to a lot of people, but the, the, the word jam, that's actually my initials, the first three letters. Oh, really? Yeah, I never really talked nice. to anyone about that. It's so my actual name is Juan Andres Morales. I just never used the Juan because this is twenty Juan to my family. So I just call me Andy Morales. It's just easier. And that's how this whole thing is. And it just took off from there. And then and, but I didn't start I had this Oh, I hear myself. Wait, I hear myself. Hello, hello? There's no echo on this end, man. Okay, okay. Okay, we're good now. Um, that was weird for a little bit. No, so that's how I started the page. So uh, I created back in January 2018, but I didn't start posting and writing pieces until maybe five months after my dad died, which was August. And then it just took off from then. And Poets Anonymous um, read one of my pieces. Mm -hmm. And then things just took off from there. And then as I started getting introduced to you and everybody else on here in the community, you know, <laughs> although... I started seeing communities, you know, like introduced to communities. And I mean, certain communities were leaving or they were vanishing. And I don't know, I just got inspired. And I'm like, I was featuring, I was just showing people on people's stories. I was like, hey, check this out. I'm like, I might as well have a community page. And then everything just sure. took off from this since like March. And we did our first live on um, August, April 6th of this year. So everything just took off from there. And it's just. And I, you know, I, I'll say, man, you know, I've, I've kept up with everything you've done, both your, your writing and as you kind of built these communities. Uh, you've got a couple of them now. Uh, but I, you know, you, you can really feel the enthusiasm and the passion that you have for this. And I think, you know, people, people like you are invaluable. And that's not just me trying to kiss ass here. It's, it's, it's the truth. I mean, there, there are so many writers out there that, that they need people to, to champion their work, to be an advocate for them, to say, like, hey, this matters, and this, this is why I think that. You know, that's not just them beating the table on their own behalf. So, you know, the, that matters. You know, what, what you're doing, what Brett's doing, what uh, Poets Anonymous, uh, a panoply of poetry. Like, there, there are so many. There, there's, there's a lot of really, you know, wonderful people doing wonderful things. And as long as this community can, can stay uh, supportive of one another, you don't let the, you know, the uh, competition piece kind of creep in like that. Yeah. That that happens a lot in music. Uh, I assume it probably happens here too. I, I see a lot of people talk shit about Atticus, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> and so like, I, I, I don't know. I, I just think, I think it's awesome what you're doing and you need to keep doing it. So. No, I think I appreciate that. And um, I, I even talk about this with my older brother, too. And um, I've said, you know, even though it's just poetry, but it's more than that. And I see so much. I see such a bigger thing. Like, that's why I started doing this. I started 
creating the podcast because yeah, there's the lies, but the lies have gone 24 hours and I started doing the podcast. So be honest, you know, be on these other platforms, you know, like Spotify, Apple and Google, because I feel like poetry is so underrated. It needs to be outside as well. I shouldn't just be in this one little cloud, you know, and because yeah. I, I can't, it can't be in just one little bubble because eventually it's going to burst. And then it's like, okay what else you know i know there's like other communities like on facebook and stuff like that but like i've heard so much negative about that i'm like uh. and i know some poets here do have on facebook but they tell me things here and there but the point is it's just like you said there's the competition part that creeps in sometimes and it's just you know like if you see my followers like i only have what, maybe 600 so followers everybody else has like twenty thousand. it's fine it's whatever it's just i'm just not all about that i'm all about you know what whatever impact I can leave behind, whatever legacy sure. I can leave behind. I think, you know what? And and if people are praising me and people are liking what I do, you know, that's God's favor of my life. That's the way I see it. Absolutely. You know what? I'm thankful for that. Yeah. You know, like, I don't care if I'm like, I have 20 million or not. It's just, it's like, it, like um, I, was talk, I was doing a live with another person named Natalie. Um, mm -hmm. She goes by Silent Love, an awesome person. And, oh, yeah, um, absolutely. She said, you see that number much. right there? Screw that number up there. It's not about that number. If, let's say, all we have is five people and that's it, hey, whatever. But those are the five people that I care about the most. You know, the people who come mm -hmm. back to me. As a matter of fact, um, what's the name of this poet? Um, I think uh, the, the, the handle is Smiting Through Two or something like that. Or the, something like that. I, I it's kind of hard to cross the, the 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 handle, but this person reached out to me recently and said, "Hey, I started a community page, so it's mining through to community." She, this person called it now, and I thought, "Oh, that's cool." But it wasn't just that. But the, what the person told me is what um, it touched me. He said, "Oh, well, I see your journey would jam them down, and I got inspired, so I want to create my own thing now." And I'm like, when that's I awesome. heard that, that I was like, you know what? That that puts a smile on my face. I'm like, okay, it's not, oh, because I'm doing it, just do it. No, I do because I love this. And I never found something I loved before until now. And at the end of there you go. Um, Brett just put it right there, smiling through, and it has two eyes. Yeah, I don't know how okay. to pronounce it. I don't know if it's a second or two or I don't know how to I'm not sure it. if I'm following them or not. I need to I need to check that out. Right. That person just opened, did a community page based on that same name, but it just says community next to it. And now okay. they just started doing that. But when they reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I saw your journey and I'm very inspired by that. I just wanted to do it. That touched me a lot more than just how many people liked my stuff. And I'm just like, sure. you know what, I'm touched by that. And I mean, well, you know, you, you have a you're in a unique position. Uh, you know, I don't know that I could ever do what you what you and Brett do. And it's not for a lack of uh, for, of passion necessarily. I just think it takes a certain a certain personality and a certain uh a certain amount of selflessness, you know, to, to put yourself in the out there like that, because um, the idea of, of people like you that and Brett and, and so many others that, that lift people up, you know, that, that find these writers that, you know, I've, I've got quite a few followers right now and I don't know how many of them are paying attention. I really don't give a shit. Uh, I love the ones that do. And I, I don't pay much attention to that either. It, it's more like, I got in a bad habit of like following people back. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm following like, too, I feel people. bad when I can't get to them. Yeah. And so, like, oh, so like man. You, you do that. And then, like, you're, I don't know what I'm looking at half the time. So I'm having to go like type everybody's page in. So I'm making sure I'm keeping up with the people that I really want to make sure I'm keeping up with. And uh, anyway, like, you know, like, like I said, it, it's invaluable to have people like that that, that care. Yeah, and, and Tara's another one of those people. You know, she really, genuinely cares about people's art being represented the right way. And, uh, you know, we, we need as many people like that as, as possible. And, and the fact that you, uh, Brett, Tara, that, that these people that are, that are running these communities are so talented themselves, you know, that that's also a, a just, that's a wonderful bonus, man. You know, it doesn't get any better. No, amen, amen. I, th that's what it's all about, you know. And I think this quarantine, I've been I've been out of work for like since March already. It just helped me appreciate what I have more. And um, oh, I yeah. started to quick. Um, when um for a long time, you know, um, I say even before I got married, like twenty seventeen going to twenty eighteen, um, I was starting to get miserable at work, right? So yeah. I had nothing going on. It was just work girlfriend at the time well fiance at the time and then i finally got married 
And then my father passes away, and so I had to do this community page thing. I mean, I didn't know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I didn't know this thing even existed, to be honest with you. So I started doing this, and I I never had a motivation or passion for anything in my life that was something like, oh, my God, I love this. The last time I had something like that it was um, technology, because I used to use computers and, and electronics and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I got so bored of it because I didn't like it anymore. I hated it. And then there was so, com- it, cause I really, it was such a competitive field. Yeah. And like, if you don't have, even you could know so much, but if you don't have this requirement, you don't have this degree, you don't have this certification. And even though I went to school, even though I didn't, I didn't have to go to school, I knew the stuff anyway, but having a degree just look good, they say, and you go to college, right, right, man. Loans, and it's just, you have to update constantly because technology is always evolving and evolving and to keep up with that. That's difficult. And I started to hate it. I, I just hate it completely. Yes, I well, dude, that, that, that's not. We're, we're not built to do that. We're not built to process information that way. We're not built to want to be moving at that pace. And at, at the end of the day, when we do it, we're doing it for the for the benefit of somebody else's wallet. And that's the necessary evil of existing in the country that we exist in and the world that we exist in. Uh, and what we do as artists is we offset that and we say, you know, fuck all that. Here's something that's real for a second yeah. and, and breathe this in and be at peace for a moment. Because, you know, I, I get that completely. I mean, I remember, you know, a really profound conversation I had with my dad um, in St. Louis in 2016. It was the last father and son trip we ever took. It was to see Bruce Springsteen, uh, who was our, like, he was the reason I started writing songs and my dad introduced me to him. And, um, this was our third, third show. I bought the tickets this time. I was, you know, uh, and that was my Christmas gift to my dad. I said, you know, we're going to go watch Bruce play the river from start to finish. And we're just going to have a bomb ass time. (laughs) And we did, man, we, we drove up to St. Louis and we, uh, I remember in the arena, they had this, uh, the name of this drink is so stupid. <laughs> it was called Bruce Juice, for God's sake. And <laughs> why why we agreed to order this, I'll never know. But it was basically uh, De Serono Sours. And um, we spent the entirety of the night, uh, which was about a three, three and a half hour show, slamming these drinks and just <laughs> singing our asses off and having a great time. But I remember before that gig, uh, we were at the Hard Rock Cafe, uh, which I could not recommend less because the, the the decor is cool the food sucks uh and we were sitting there <laughs> we were sitting there and i was really unhappy with my job at the time because i you know all, all i wanted to do was sing man and and write and that's you know maybe that's a, a bit juvenile at that point where where i was in my life but uh i remember sitting across from dad and saying you know man i, I just don't know what to do you know, like, how do I, how do I be happy? And, uh, I guess, you know, he, he just looked at me. I remember him kind of pausing and he looked at me and, uh, he said, you know, I don't know. And that, you know, in that moment, something kind of flipped in me. And, um, I remember, and, at that point thinking like, wow, you know, that's, that's as honest as anyone's ever been with me was that uh, over some shitty chicken tenders. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And and just thinking like, wow, you know, that, you know, you you spend, if if you're lucky and I was extremely lucky to have a father who loved you dearly and, and made sure you knew that. And, you know, my dad was my best friend and, uh, that was the first time I, I sat there as an adult man uh, looking at him and thinking like, now I really see you not just the, the Superman image that I built in my mind, but the, uh, the man, you know? Wow. And uh, yeah. Anyway. No, that's not, I love this. This is powerful. Cause I feel like that with my dad too. Um, I get like my relationship with my dad got awesome when I came to the ward and I prayed a lot and then, our relationship really got better from there. Um, you said something very interesting, and um, cause you said so many things. I'm, I'm trying to remember every little thing you said because it was so powerful. Um, 
about I, when I talk a lot, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay, no, because this is awesome. I love it. One thing about me, like, there's never such thing as talking too much. Because at the end of the day, I love to learn. I love this that kind of conversation. I love this. So the cool. fact that we can use this time to do things like this as well. Uh, when I first did an interview with Christian Provisano, and that that conversation was so awesome. I said, like, "Oh man, I want to do more of this." That's so when I reached out to you and said, "Yo, you got your book. Let's talk about your book and everything." I said, "Let's do it, man. Here we are." Just yeah, no, I'm just amazing deep conversation. I love conversations like that. I wish a lot of us in life would have more conversations like this, because then that way I think the world would be a lot better place. It wouldn't be as hostile as it is, but that's just my opinion, honestly. Well, it, it, it definitely wouldn't be as surface level as most of your daily interactions tend to be. So um, <laughs> we, we would also probably drive each other insane, but maybe we're doing that anyway. So, <laughs> Oh, my God. All right, so I want to utilize the features as much as possible. So yeah, let's, let's do see it. if anyone's down with this. Um, guys who are here, if you have any questions that you might want to ask him, um, you can put the questions on the question mark box on the bottom of the screen and we'll answer. Uh, so if that's cool with you people. Um, wait. Yes, the art of conversation. The art of conversation. Yeah. Yes. You know what, Brett? That's so true. And that's what it is, too. Um, George Lopez, the comedian, even though he made this as a joke, but he, this is so true. He said, people do not want to communicate anymore. Everybody wants to go like this. Uh, okay, whatever. It's, it's, it's all this now. Like, yep. like, I could be in front of you. Oh, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you mean to tell me... <laughs> Like, it just, I don't know, it just, oh, man. Like, I don't know what happened where the art of conversation got lost. It's so true. And it's just like, um, Raven. nobody wants to communicate anymore. And then when they do, it's always, okay, oh, well, yeah. I'm like, wait, what? Like, wait, but I just gave you this whole thing, and oh, you tell me it's okay? Like, uh, Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't know if anybody remembers the movie Jerry Maguire, but it's uh, one of my favorites. And uh, there's, there's a line, I'm trying to remember who says it, it Anyway, they, they say, uh, you know, I, it, it's good to have a conversation where you feel like the other person's not just waiting for their turn to talk. Wow. And that I always found that to be uh, profound because it's it's absolutely true. And you, you can tell in somebody's body language and somebody's, you know, in, in the depth of the conversation, how deep they're willing to go. And, and most people are, I don't want to say most people, but a lot of people are, uh, they're just there to be heard. And so... Amen. Amen. I, no, I definitely agree with that. I think that's what it is, too. Sometimes people just want to be heard because maybe where they're at in their social circle, um, people just, I don't know, it's just that they're not able to do so. And I think that's very yeah. important. Um, that's why with me, um, I remember when I was growing up, unfortunately, my emotions, me wanting to ask questions, me trying to find out what's what. I wasn't allowed. Like, it's just, you know, and I grew up in a whole Hispanic community family. So in the Hispanic culture, it's like, all right, shut the hell up, do what I tell you to do, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like, my dad wasn't affectionate or anything like that. Neither was my mom. That, that's just that's just how their upbringing was. It was always that, that tough love, you know? So to try to explain to my dad, oh, I'm depressed because I got, I got bullied at school. Like, it's bad enough I had like a language barrier, so it's kind of like, um, yeah, I don't know. I explain to my dad or ask my dad advice about sex or anything like that. Like my dad never had that talk with me, so I had to learn that on my sure. own. And my older brother, you know, he had his own thing going on, so he he wasn't really around like that. So I was mostly around my mother, my my. It was mostly me and my parents, but then my sister was around. But then there was like a whole thing, but it was mostly just me and my parents for the most part. And that's all I could remember, you know. So to just go. You know, like try, you know, and then try to explain that to Hispanics, especially the, the the old school Hispanic system. They they don't it's not a system, but you know what I mean. Like they try to explain that to them. Like they said about mental health, they try to explain that to the Hispanic culture, especially at that time. That sure, well, I, you know, and and if you think about it, you know my my dad's generation as well. Uh, there there wasn't a lot of talk about about that that wasn't something that was considered it was it was get over it it was tough it out it was whatever uh you know it, until cultural uh norms like that are broken down and and men are allowed to be vulnerable uh 
you know, and, until we're all allowed to be vulnerable and allowed to just speak on how we're feeling. You know, it, it, it's sad. Uh, uh, just just a few houses down uh, a week or two ago, a, a guy that had just recently got engaged um, seemed to have a lot going for him. Uh, he hung himself in his closet. He was, he, he had, you know, he was really excited about marrying his girl and all that. She goes to Walmart. And before she goes to Walmart, he's loving on her and all this stuff. She comes back and he's gone. And that, uh, yeah. you know, that we, we could go on and on about the mental health uh, subject. It's definitely something that needs to be addressed. It's definitely something that's out of control and it needs to be just out and on the table, man. Like I'm, I'll tell you right now, uh, like I suffer from depression. I, I take uh, Lexapro for that and I, I do my best every single day. Um you know, it's, it's one of those things where it doesn't need to be taboo to talk about that. It just needs to be something that like we recognize, like this is, this is it, you know, this is how it works. So. No, I agree with you. And like, it's funny, you said it, not funny. I'm like, I got something, it's a funny thing. No, um, I don't very think interesting the, uh, question with me. The question box. Where, um, when I was it. growing up, I went to psychiatric therapy. I was on medication. I was in special ed, which I, I you can't even say that anymore. It's like special needs now or some crap like that. Like, yeah. I don't know. It's just ridiculous. But, you know, I was hospitalized. Like, I, I went through some things that unfortunately would never explain to me, man. I think it's go back to the culture. No one sat down with me and explained to me what the hell I was going through, why I was going through this stuff, why I was dying with a personality disorder. Like, no one really explained that to me. And it's just, I had to live life just trying to, like, just trying to think, 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 and try to find out for myself what was going to do for me. And yep. then, unfortunately, that affected my adulthood as I got older because the older I got, I guess I could say the more naive I became, because little did I understand, little did I realize how much that was going to hurt me as I got older. And then I started seeing things that I've never seen before. My dad sheltered us, especially with me. I was the other gotcha. three, so I was sheltered. Wait, hold on. Wait. Wait. Something. I, I saw somebody I say a second thing. Yeah, they, they weren't seeing the question box or whatever. I, you know, I, I don't know anything about the features. Uh, Guys, if you just want to type questions, you know, I'll answer them yes. that way as well. Yeah, um, some people see it, some people don't. Um, I'm sorry, for some reason, when I talk, it's, I, I hear like a static relax. That's weird. See, now I don't hear it. Now I, that's weird. I don't know. This is Instagram, but anyway, um, uh, what was I saying again? Uh, remind me. Uh, you were you were talking again about just the uh, working through the kind of the mental anguish and, the, and some of the cultural things. Okay. That we're you, yeah. Right. So it's like, I, like it affected me as an adult that a lot of things I went through, I started to see things I didn't understand because my dad sheltered me, you know, and it was just, I don't know if it was overprotective or he was just scared, but it affected me as I got older that I didn't know how to handle situations. Like put it yeah. this way. I've seen, I've had friends that died in front of me. I've had friends that did things that I was like, what the hell are you? doing like i didn't even know how to control the situation and again and, and i look back now and i have a child on my like, dad i don't want my son to go through that right and i'm just sure. like these are certain things on my dad I, like dad i understand you had a rough life too because your dad wasn't around but these are things i wish my dad would have spoke to me about like he should have but I well you know but that I, at the end of the day andy i mean when we really think back on that like uh they were dealing also with the the cultural norms that they grew up with, right. uh, and it, 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 it's a pattern of behavior that leads to that. And so, it's not necessarily a failing on their part; it, it's a failing on the part of society. And if it becomes a failing on their part, it's because they chose to ignore what society was saying, like, "Hey, this is happening." And when you shake your head and you say, "No, that's not a real thing," you do so many people a disservice. And you you exclude so many people, and and you you know the the divisiveness of the world we live in right now is it's disgusting. So you know I I don't know that our parents failed us. My dad swore up and down that he had never been depressed a day in his life, and maybe he was telling the truth. 
You know, I, I don't know how the fuck you exist in this world without. But, like, but you know what? I think there's a there's a confusion with that, and I, and I think yeah. because my sister goes through anxiety, she gets depressed a lot. She's on medication as well, and um, I think people confuse depression with oh, I'm just sad because yeah. Depression does not mean you are sad. I, it's, it's it works with it, but it's not what that is. There's more to the bigger picture that a lot of people don't want to talk about for whatever the reason is. It's sure, ridiculous. sure. How, what, and, and I don't know what's worse before when we grow, or is it worse now where people are filtering things way too much? Um, I, you know, I, I think there's a there's a balance that needs to be struck. Uh, you know, I mean, we we live in this cancel culture now where it's like one fucked up thing that you said 10 years ago on Twitter pops up and you're, you are done uh, as, as if people don't grow, as if people don't change, as if um, forgiveness and mercy are uh, such alien ideas. And these fucking people have never messed up in their life, you know, yeah. like that. Uh, it, it's such a strange time. And, and I think really what it is, what it boils down to is people need something to rally behind. They need something to believe in. They need something to belong to. And people want to be outspoken. They want to be heard. They don't want to feel like they're just drifting through and what they have to say doesn't matter. So even if it means regurgitating something else, they're going to say it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what the, what the remedy for that is. I, I think at, at the end of the day, we need, to, we need to zoom the lens out a little bit to see the bigger picture. We need to, to cut each other a little bit of slack and saying, like, you know, there were a lot of things that led to a person behaving this way or feeling this way. And that's okay. We need to try to bring them f with us rather than cut them loose and say, fuck you, you're on your own. I think that's a disgusting idea. I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm not trying to take the, the conversation to a religious place, but I, I think, you know, the happiest people that I've met are people that want to be inclusive. That are people that want to love their their neighbor you know what i mean like um uh, you know maybe i'm being a little too um, miss america talking about that but i i think that there's a place for it and i think that i don't know it just bores me to death the idea that i need to to condemn somebody for for a momentary lapse of judgment that seems right. so silly to me and so juvenile and uh I'm not saying that people don't have a right to feel the way that they feel. They, they, they do, but try to educate people. You know what I mean? And if you can't, then at least you tried. But don't, you know, fuck off with this. You know, you, you said something wrong and now you're done. You know, this right. is why you're, you're a piece of shit. Like, that's such a silly yeah, idea. I saw you on that. I know, because um, see, because now, like, I, I feel like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man of faith, so long. Uh, Sure. Like, I like to bring this up. Um, like I know there was a scripture where Jesus was like, you know, they were gonna put, they were um, the Pharisees were gonna stone this adulterous person mm -hmm. because she did adultery, or whatever. And Jesus said, okay, one who has no sin cast the first stone, and nobody cast the first stone. Yeah, because I mean, basically trying to say, okay. If you never did a sin, then you could do it. If you're not, then shut the hell up. That's basically what he was trying to say. You know? But, but even like, if, if you want to break it down to Jesus, we want to talk about that. I mean, when, when we really talk about what we're being taught, when we talk about someone that was so influential and so, uh, you know, when I read the Bible, I don't read the Bible as, as someone who was raised in a religious, you know, family. I, I wasn't. We went to church like twice on Sunday my whole damn life and, I was taught I was taught a prayer when I was a kid to say before I go to sleep, uh, and that was about the extent of it. <laughs> so, right, um, right. you know, when I when I start reading those texts and all that myself, I come from it as, as a person who questions everything. I don't blindly follow anything. I, I refuse. I think that that's a dangerous concept, and I want nothing to do with it. But uh, you know, when, when I read the the word of uh, you know, especially the New Testament, if I if I go down that path. I, I see somebody that is seeing things as they are. They're seeing a big picture. They're not, he's, he's radically inclusive in most of the things that he says. And, and right. unfortunately, you know, R Richard Rohr has a, a lot of great things to say about this topic, but he talks about, you know, the Southern U S a couple hundred years ago or whatever, decided that everything in the fucking Bible was literal and that, you know, possibly set 
back the understanding of what was trying to be taught however many years, right? Uh, right. When, when Christ himself said, that, like, I only teach a parable. Well, a parable is a story, you know? Like, are right. you getting the point of what I'm teaching you? Not this right. literally happened. So, you know, I think, you know, to break it down, to not go down that road too much, you know, inclusivity, be cool to one another. It's not hard. Forgiveness is not hard. I mean, sometimes it is, but when, when it comes to something small that doesn't affect you directly, try to educate people and bring them forward. Try to help them see a better side of things. Don't just condemn people. That's such a boring ass way to live your life. No, I, I agree with you on that. And I think like even, and it's just because um, uh, even in like, again, like even in the Christian, you know, the religious community, um, I, 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 I said this to many people too, like I, I'm a man that follows Jesus Christ. I don't like calling myself a Christian, even though I fall into that category, only because the word itself, unfortunately, has so much negative connotation to it. But the point I'm trying to make is even within the Christian community, people do the same exact thing. Any community you go to, it's yeah. like that, where sure, pointing the finger, poke, poke the bear, there was all this stuff. And, like, and I'll say this, I've seen a lot of church hurt happen where People don't want to come back to church anymore because of something someone else did. And yeah, maybe like I look at it as, you know what, fine. I, I forgive you, but it doesn't mean I have to trust you again. That's the way I see it, right? But then, yeah. but you get, but it becomes so uncomfortable because if that still person still goes to the church, same church you go to, and then they don't feel comfortable around that person, they're going to want to go somewhere else. But sometimes you church hop to a point where you don't, altogether, you just don't want to go to church anymore. And, and, and it sucks sometimes because it's like, okay, like, my whole thing is, if I go there, I go there for God. I'm not here for people. I'm not here for whatever. And that's just my life, whatever. But there's people who think the same way. But because something like that affected it, then it's like, it, it gets to a situation even also that this is why people don't want to believe anymore because of stupidity like that. So it's like, if you're supposed to be walking a certain way and then, you, and I'm not, I'm not judging because, you know, again, like, I'm not, I'm not any better either, but it's just. Like, how are we trying to influence each other when we're condemning each other over stuff? Whether it's big, small, whatever. It's just, I understand we're supposed to be accountable for each other, you know, in, in a loving way. But if we're not displaying that, then what, what the hell's the point? Well, I, I think when you when you choose to live in fear and you choose to use your religion as an afterlife insurance policy, you're you're not approaching anything from a place of love at that point. And so maybe the idea needs to be that we really think about why we're talking about those things, why we're reading those things, why we want to follow those things. And if you can get back to what the point is, right, then you're probably going to have a greater impact on people. So if you want people to, to, to follow an idea, the, you know, the idea is to witness. Well, the idea of witnessing is not handing out tiny, you know, pocket sized Bibles on the corner of college campuses. The idea of witnessing is living your life be you know live your life the best you can man and if you can do that if you can love people and be inclusive and and be somebody that that people want to be around and you show mercy you show grace you're going to be magnetic Imagine. so yeah. be magnetic and don't worry about the rest of it man like we're, we're we get so caught up like every every system that we have like we we find a way to complicate it to the point to where it's like it can't just be about love it's got to be about not burning in hell it can't just be about art. It's got to be about commerce. It can't just be about simple anything, you know, to the point where, you know, my wife and I have the conversation about Jesus, man, I just crave simplicity now. I don't, you know, you take me to get ice cream. I want vanilla. You know, I just want something to be, to be what it is and no questions asked. Right. Like right, right. no bullshit. So, uh, Anyway, I'm pro I'm rambling at this point. So where do we no, want to go? It's all here? good, bro. It's all about you, brother. It's all good, man. We got some cool people in here, man. Yes, yes. So people are having issues with the question box. So I don't know if uh, I guess I'll read some of the comments. Um, yeah, it should be like when you have a comment right next to the comment box, there should be like a two boxes and like a question mark, and it's supposed to. It's funny because on my phone I don't see it, but on the on my phone here where I'm live streaming, it, you see it. But if I go on the page this way. It doesn't show it, but I think some people might need the new updated version of Instagram because I know that's a, that's a thing also. But um, all right, so I guess so much for the I guess so well, much for the question. Like somebody, somebody's got a question, just type it. I'll I'll 
answer. Yeah, if I could get to it, there's so many cool. comments. Um, but yeah, man, like you just hit the nail on the coffin. That's exactly what it is, man. Like definitely. So, all right. So hold on. Let me. Oh, now you freezing on me? What's up? What's going on? Huh? All right, let me restart this quick. All right, so I'm going to read another piece that belongs to you, and then we can talk about that as well. So hold Yeah, up. let's do it. Oh, let's do this. This is good, man. Yeah, again, I really thank you for being a part of this with me, man. Hey, man. no, thank you for asking me to be a part of it, man. I've, you know, this is, I, I would like to get more involved in the community in this, in this way. Uh, I don't know how to go about that. I don't necessarily want to start my own thing. <laughs> I don't want to, <laughs> because I don't want to disappoint anybody. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, I- anytime somebody wants to get on and just chat or, or get on and, you know, really kind of delve into uh into art or music or just whatever's on their mind uh nothing nothing makes me happier than engaging in in a unique and interesting conversation so i'm always i'm always down no thank you thank you appreciate that now i know you know it's good yeah, before, yeah. Soon, you know um and it's like i remember the, the last time i was saying before too like when i was doing it with christopher Bazzano, it was just so like this conversation was so lit and then now here we are again now I'm doing it with you. And it's like, I, I, it's funny because that alone inspired me. I said, you know, I want to do more of these, you know? So I have that Monday night where I have my team do some stuff and we do stuff. But then I like to do the separate ones where, hey, you want to do an interview? Let's talk. Let's get to know each other more, you know? And it's just like, mm-hmm. I, I love doing that, you know? Um, Again, it's just like, I, I want to do more of these interviews with other poets that, that you know like again just to do it like i want this because it's so it's such a beautiful thing you know and we don't have enough of it you know i agree i agree and i think doing the, the open mics the last two open mics i've done like i've gotten to know more people more poets on here that I say yo let, let's let me know you have a story yo let's talk about it man i don't care it's just you know what it's just the story let's tell our story let's engage let's have a great conversation and and, and here we are again you and i doing exactly what like i just envision that i i you know we will all be doing one day it's just such a powerful thing it's so beautiful you know absolutely man i'm enjoying it thank you man no and again i'm honored to have you here brother like thank girl, you man. thank you I, I appreciate the like i said i appreciate the invite man it's it's been awesome definitely thank you man all right so okay so you have a spoken word version of this but I found the text version of this piece, right? So it's called To Whom ha- I Have Concern. To Whom I Have Concern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. I remember this one. So, yeah. All right. So I'd like to issue a formal apology <laughs> to those I care for and to those who care for me. I don't mean to worry you. Writing's a funny thing. For as long as I can remember, I've been under the spell bewitched by the written word. Whether through song or poetry, I know... I'm sorry, I know no other way forward. There's a thousand, if not millions of others just that conjures intense emotions. I love taboo language and its ability to make you uncomfortable, yet unable to turn away. I'm rambling. Just know that I'm fine. I'm frazzled, not suicidal, broken, but not without hope. So enjoy the work or hate it, whatever. Take it seriously and with a big grain of salt. In all of these words, I've tried to leave room for you with all the love I can spare. Yeah. I, I know I stumbled on some parts. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That. No, you, you, you read it great, man. I enjoyed that. That It's always cool to hear somebody else uh, read what you put, you know, what you put to paper because it's, there's a, there's a certain musicality that people speak with and, and you can hear the difference uh, with each individual reader. So I, I always get a big kick out of it. So that was cool. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely. No, so tell me about that beat. Tell me about that. Um, okay, well, uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, being somebody that, that probably everybody that's in here right now listening to us can attest to this, being somebody that writes and puts, uh, puts their work out for everyone to, to read, um, when you're when, when certain people read those pieces and certain people that don't understand uh, what it is to write and what it is to uh, sort of draw from whatever, you know, experiences or colors that you have to use on your palette, 
uh, people assume that everything that you write is literal, that everything that you have to say is as is in your life. And, you know, I'm, I, you know, here's my apology, my formal apology to anybody that reads anything that I write. It's not all 100% like as is in my life. Like I take liberties. I work as a writer. Like that's what I did in music. That's what I'm doing now. Um, you have to find truth in something, but leave something of yourself in it. Right. So uh, I wrote that piece uh, to be a formal apology to uh, these people who care about me deeply, who I love uh, that were worried about me because of the way that I was writing. And so it was kind of a, uh, Hey, I'm good. And it was kind of a, Hey, fuck off because I'm not going to just write uh, this feel good shit that you want me to write so that you feel better about what I'm doing. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I've got like, if I do that, then I'm, I'm saying like art be damned. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've right. got to make this person feel better about what I'm thinking. And that is a, that, that is a dangerous proposition and, and not one that I'm willing to be a part of. And so, uh, you know, it, it's a pretty straightforward piece. Um, and that last little bit was, was meant to, uh, to leave, uh, a, a bit of, you know, to, to end it on a high note, which says, you know, when I write these pieces, uh, the, the hope is that, that as you read them, you find yourself yes. something, something of yourself in it and, uh, that it becomes yours. And, and at that point, it, it doesn't matter what I meant. It matters what you mean. It matters how you feel. Uh, and if this, uh, you know, evokes something in you, then, then I was successful and I feel great about the piece at that point because you gave a shit enough to, to like it and to comment on it and to give me feedback and all that. So, um, it, it, it was more kind of a tribute to what it is to, uh, to occupy this skin and to say that this is what I do. I'm a writer. So, Wow. No, that's down. Wow. <laughs> Dude, again, it's so true, man. And again, thank you for that. Because I get inspired when I read pieces and then it inspires me to write something. Um, Brett wrote a piece called Untold. And oh, then yeah. that inspires wow. me to write a piece. Dude, you, Brett, you, you can go down the list with Brett. Like, yeah. that guy... He is he is a fantastic writer, and and so many of the people that are sitting here commenting are are phenomenal writers. Like, at, I can probably send you three pieces minimum from each of them, where I'm just like, holy shit! I wish I would have come up with that. Like that, <laughs> yeah, that's brilliant. That's you know what I mean? Oh, fuck. Oh, crap. Oh, what happened? Oh, that was weird. Hello? What's up, man? Okay. Oh, no. For some reason, you muted for a second, so I didn't get to hear Sorry the last thing you said. That was weird. Ah, okay. okay, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> My wife's actually about to walk in, so that's cool. Uh, no, oh, okay. No, no. So what was the last? No, I was just saying, you know, we're, we're really lucky to be surrounded by so many talented people that are you know, kind of fueling this, this community and, and helping to propel it forward. So. Yeah. yeah. And um, I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to say, I had something in my mind. Oh, about, about Brett. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the thing with Brett, when he writes, he'll take me to a place that I'm just like, okay, I've never been in this part of my mind before. Because when I read a piece, when I read the Bible, I read someone's piece on, on Instagram, I put myself as if I'm, the person feeling this i want to see Absolutely. i want to yeah. experience the piece and brett has this thing that it's just like every day he wants i have to have more and it's like if i can open this door and go and see what's in his mind like this is insane and he wrote that piece and i've like oh my god so i wrote a piece called i was never jesus like mm -hmm. came out of that piece and it was just like holy crap you know like like i love when a piece can do that you know, well, that, 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 you know that, so that's kind of the beauty of what we have here, man. Like we we've got these wonderful writers that, you know, if, if we're paying attention and we're keeping up like th this whole thing feeds itself. You know what I mean? We, we, we can have an infinite amount of inspiration from a lot of really wonderful minds that that 
without this uh, platform, you know, we would never know these people. I, I live in I live in Arkansas for Christ's sake. Like I'm I'm sitting in this little town. You know what I mean? Like, right. uh, and you and you're what in Jersey? Is that right? Yeah, like I, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, but yeah, right. I live in New Jersey, Bayonne, sure. a weird town in New Jersey. That a lot of people don't yeah. really know. Yeah, it's like what, like what in what universe do we meet outside of this? Right. So I I think you know it's super cool, uh, and just man, we're we're fortunate. A lot of lot of wonderful people to know on here. Yes, yeah. but there are some people who have met, like you know, like I, like for example, Brian Edwards. I think he. Moved I was going to say Tara. Like Tara's to... talking here. Tara's from Alaska, <laughs> so okay, you know Tara, about really far away. Ta- ta- okay, <laughs> I was watching this movie with Brian. 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 Wait, Ryan Reynolds, where like he, he his family lives in Alaska. Is it really what they say it is six months is daytime and then six months is nighttime all year round? Is that true? Like, is that really like that? Um, Tara, if you can answer that question, because I heard like they're like they're like I heard their 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 time is just interesting. Like you have a certain, like it's always daytime at one point, then it's always nighttime at one point. She said yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. So I really like that. Yo, I was going to go to Alaska, but yo, but what's it like in Alaska? I wonder. You know. But um, oh man, that's uh. <laughs> that's true. Nobody has never got caught with Alaska. But yeah. I'm saying, and then what? Brent lives in Milwaukee. Brian lives in Florida. Yeah, um, no, I mean, we're we're all over the place, and that's you know. Oh, how how cool is that? That's one thing I'm thankful for as far as technology, that they were able to do this. Absolutely. I agree. If nothing else, because this is crazy, man. But I definitely see this as like, you know what I think about? I think about, I, I don't know if you know uh, the Beats Generation. This is like in the 50s, 60s, but like yeah. they had this movement. Um, Carol I, I was recently studying loud about like Allen Ginsberg and yep. Elise Cohen. But a lot of stuff we talked about, right? Because you said something earlier about topics too. And um, they talked about topics that back then it was so taboo, but yet we're talking about them right now to this day. And it's okay, but it's so interesting. And I always wonder like whatever that movement was, but like, was that a prediction of what society was going to become today? Absolutely. And, 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 you know, like there, there are still taboos today. There, there are still topics that we're not supposed to touch on. And, and, and now in this cancel culture that we live in, like you touch on them, you're done. And I mean, I think as artists, as, as soon as we entertain the idea that our work needs to like, if, if you back off of a piece because you think you're going to step on somebody's toes, you're fucking nice. doing it wrong. You know what I mean? Like Yo, you are, you are, you are doing yourself a disservice. You're doing the reader a disservice. Uh, you've got to be willing to go there, and you've got to be willing to accept the consequences of that. And if you're not, then why are you here? You know what I mean? Like you, you just want to do what? You want to have surface level, you know, material, and that, whatever. I mean, if that's what you want to do, cool. But at the end of the day, I'm more interested in people that are wanting to be real people that are wanting to be honest and people that are wanting to go there. So. Amen. Amen. That's the way it should be. And I'm the same way. I refuse to shut my mouth off to like the stupidity of society. If that makes sense. Like, the uh, what's the, I, I watch, um, there's this, there's this, um, wrestling podcast I listen to, Don Tony and Kevin Castle, and Don Tony makes me laugh because they'll say something like, Stop, Anthony. I refuse to, to reduce myself to the pussification of society. <laughs> like, it makes me laugh when you said that, but that's how I feel. Like, I would not reduce myself to the pussification. I'm sorry. That's a weird word to, well, to it's like, just, you know, yeah, like word we, with man. We, you like, know, if, if we're constantly like, Art was meant to step on your fucking feelings. It was yes. meant to challenge your your preconceived notions of life. And if we're saying that it doesn't do that anymore, then unplug life support. You know what I mean? Like, just let's call this thing done. But I yeah. refuse. I refuse to comply with that. Like, I'm. I will write about whatever the fuck I choose. I expect you to. I expect Tara to. Brett, Anthony, yes. Brian. You know, all of these wonderful writers. Like get it out there man whatever it is you have to say 
just no, this do is it, cool. I definitely agree with you on that, and that's the way it should be. And um, and again, it's just unfortunate that this is what's become to where, just like back then. I, again, I don't know if it's worse then than now or now that or whatever. But the point is, it's even to this day, the fact that to this day, it's still getting to the point that people are still trying to cancel so many things and filter so yeah. many things. It's like no, like that's not how that works. Well, you know, unfortunately, that that is the that is the reality, right? Like that's what we're going to deal with. Uh, so do it anyway. Amen. You know what I mean? I would rather a piece I write be controversial and be relevant 20 years after I die than for it to get a thousand likes today. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Nick Drake made records and never sold shit, died in the seventies and was rediscovered again in 2000 and his work means something. It's about yeah. the art, man. If, if, if that's not where you're trying to go, then stop wasting time exactly no and that's the same thing with elise cohen a lot of people didn't know who she was and then after she yeah. passed away and years years later because now a lot of people are talking about that beats movement thing I, i've been reading a lot about this too lately that she's reaper so says I'll, I'll 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 i always say be famous after i die i'll be famous <laughs> after i die absolutely you will be oh uh, but, but it's so it. true and it's like and it's only because one thing I read about her, she was definitely overlooked by the other poets from that time. But now there's sh- not like recently people are shedding light into her life, and, and you see a lot of stuff she went through. It's so relatable. Like them, maybe yeah. back then we didn't know who she was, but now we know who she was because they're shedding the light. And it's just again, like you said, it's just crazy how now yeah. you know, like oh man, you know. Uh, how much time we got left here, bud? Um, uh we have. It's right now we're up to we're fifty. Wait, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have um seven minutes left. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's hit on whatever you want to hit on, man. And I'm uh, I'm gonna go spend the rest of this evening with my lady. No, nah, no doubt, man. Sounds good to me, <laughs> brother. And you know what? Like, you're fine. Like, so because it's funny because I was actually gonna this next thing was the last thing I was gonna touch on. And check this out. And it's a yeah. piece, you, it's it's a short piece that you wrote a long time ago, and it actually aligns with what you just said. Ready? All right. Yeah, let's do it. Seek out truth and defend it. The cost could be substantial, but your soul will remain your own. Is that not the whole fucking game? Yes. Like, yeah. That, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yes. Uh, February 23rd, yeah. 2019. Oh wow! That's actually a couple of days. That's a couple of days after my son was born. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, he was born yeah, in nineteen. I mean, yeah, you know, I I think that that piece is, it you know, it's one of those little blurb pieces, a few lines. I I don't typically write those. I definitely don't write them anymore. Uh, but in the moment, it felt true, and I it feels true hearing it out of your mouth <laughs> you know what i mean just sitting here right now um if that's not what we're here to do then you know don't call yourself a poet don't call yourself an artist like don't waste time there you know bukowski didn't care about that shit kerouac didn't care about that shit raymond carver didn't care about that shit <laughs> like jim you know harrison didn't care about that shit like say what you have to say and if it's true to you even if it if you know they show up outside your house with the torches ready to burn your fucking house down with you in it right that that's that's the game you know that's what you signed up for so uh yeah i I, I haven't thought about that piece in a long time it's cool that you read that one that's that's from way back yeah, again, this is funny, and it all because a lot of these pieces I picked that random. Right, oh, okay, let's talk about that. And because even though I'll pick certain things, but a lot of things don't always, you know, let's say work out in 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 the live. That let's say I have a plan, but then sometimes it just becomes so organically you forget about them. But and I, I'm looking at what else I have saved on the folder, and you're saying what you said. Say, okay, this is perfect. And I showed it to you. Like I read that piece. I'm like, this is exactly what you just said. This is the short yeah. version of what you said, but it's exactly what you just said. Yeah, it's probably better that you read it than me to say it because I'll, I'll eat up a bunch of minutes trying to say it where I said it probably in four lines before. Right. <laughs> no, but still, it's just, 
I just love how organic this has been, you know. Um, oh no, no I've, I've really enjoyed this, man. I, I, I do appreciate it. So, uh, no, no, any, no, any, no, any no, other no. questions you've got, man? Uh, May 29th, though, is, is D Day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we have four minutes left. So if you want, I like, talk about your book quick, and then we'll just end it right there. Then. Uh, you, you know, I don't, I don't have any grand statement to make about it. It's a, uh, it's an, it's a labor of love. You know, it, it, it's a tribute to my father, and it's meant to be a a prayer and a helping hand for anyone navigating uh, the fog of grief. You know what I mean? What it is to uh, walk that road. And unfortunately it, it's a road we will all share. And, uh, I know you and I know that well. Um, so I hope it, you know, I hope it will find a, a, a place with you. I hope it will resonate with you. Uh, and that's really all I got to say about it, man. It's just, it's, a. Uh, I feel I feel good about it, and I hope others do too. Man, amen, brother, and that's what it's all about, man. Brandon, thank you so much for joining this. Thank you, with. Andy. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate it so much. To be here with you, and honestly, bro, we gotta do this again sometime. Absolutely. Brother, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. You, you let me know when you want to do it, man. We're we're gonna get this. Uh, all this furniture moved to the new uh the new joint and we'll uh we'll we'll do this again. Absolutely. So brother, enjoy the rest of your night with your wife, dude. God bless you, bro, and, and be safe. Thank you, bro. Um, sanitize your hands or whatever. <laughs> I'm all over it. I promise. Yes. So brother, thank you so much, man. Honor and a privilege, man. Thank you, man. Thank you, my friend. You be good. All right, you too. God bless you, man. Bye bye. God bless. All right.